It is the News Blitz with Randy Wang on Talk Radio 790 KABC. We're here every single day from 5 to 6 talking about the local issues that matter to you most and taking your phone calls at 800-222-KABC, 1-800-222-5222. You can email me as well. I try to read and respond to everyone at randykabc at gmail.com. That's randykabc at gmail.com. It is a hundred and 11 degrees in the San Fernando Valley right now. I don't know what was going on when I was driving home from Culver City to where I live in the West San Fernando Valley, but three different intersections, the traffic lights were completely out and I the whole time I'm like, oh no, is my power out? Do I got to empty out my freezer? Are the dogs freaking out because they've been alone and they're in a hundred degree heat? Luckily the power's not out, but my internet is down. Supposed to be restored by 6 p.m. Right when this show ends. So we're running today off of my mobile hotspot on my cell phone. So hopefully that holds up. If it doesn't, you'll hear a best of presentation of this show. But so far, so good. Go ahead and cross your fingers for me. I think we'll try to make it another 53 minutes. Well, one story that I saw a few days ago, I filed away because every time I see it, I panic just a little bit. As you know, I am the proud owner of two very small dogs. I've got a 13-pound Cavalier King Charles Spaniel, and I've got a 7-pound Rat Terrier Chihuahua. They are my pride and joy. They are my everything. So when I see stories of more coyote sightings in places where you don't usually see coyote sightings, like the mid-Wilshire area, not near any foothills, I get a little spooked. What the heck is going on here? The coyotes coming out because it's so damn hot, even they want to go over to the west side? I don't know. We're going to look at the latest coyote sighting, get some tips on how to deal with coyotes, but I want to hear from you at 800-222-KABC. I want to get a map going, 800-222-5222. Have you had a run-in with a coyote in your neighborhood? We're not talking about the ones that smuggle stuff over the border. We're talking actual coyotes, ones that want to eat your little cats and dogs. If you have had a run-in with a coyote in your neighborhood, tell me how you handled it. 800-222-KABC, 1-800-222-5222. Let's start with this report from Fox 11. These sightings have been going on for about a month, and neighbors in this very urban area say that they have been on especially high alert since several cats were killed. Oh, poor kitties. This is awful. Spotted at all hours of the day and night, these videos posted to Facebook show coyotes in the Miracle Mile area. Dozens of residents have taken to social media to share their encounter. I used to work in that area. There's no trees. There's no forest. There's not even any parks. It's just Wilshire Boulevard. Dozens of residents have taken to social media to share their encounters and warn others about keeping their pets safe. It doesn't seem to be limited to any time of day in particular. People have been seeing them, you know, like 4 to 8 a.m. range, afternoons, evenings. um. Okay, that really spooks me because I have one just homegrown theory with coyotes. I was under the assumption I'd be okay as long as I didn't walk my dog's after sundown or before sunrise. This is a true story. I was walking my dogs in my neighborhood in the San Fernando Valley, and I'm in the middle of the valley, so I'm not near the foothills. I'm not near anything. I'm in the middle of the concrete jungle. There's no parks. There's nothing. I'm walking my dogs early because it was a day like today, super hot. So I figured I'm going to get the dogs out, go around the block before the sun even comes out. And... I am walking around, not totally paying attention because sometimes I'm flipping with my phone, making sure the dogs do their business. I round the corner. I get past this one house that is an annoying house in the neighborhood because he's got these giant orange trees and he never cleans up the oranges or picks the fruit. And all the bushes are overgrown, so you can't really see around the corner of that house. And I get past that house, and the house next to it, I see... The house that's there that has AstroTurf. And on the AstroTurf, I see a coyote lying down, sitting there. Because I did not see it beforehand, because the house with all the shrubbery was blocking my view, 
I end up about two feet away from a living, breathing coyote while I have on leashes my little chihuahua and my little cavalier. And let's just say this was about 6.45 in the morning. I panicked. I absolutely panicked. Now, I know that you're not supposed to run away from these things because if you turn your back, then you're prey. I knew that. But the first thing all I could do, and it was just a visual reaction because I don't know what this thing's going to do. It looked hungry and my dogs look like food, is I picked up the little one, the one, I started screaming bloody murder as loud as I could. I guess that's actually what you're supposed to do is kind of freak it out because they're timid. It starts walking away, so now I'm walking backwards, just screaming, 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 screaming. I don't know if I've ever been that. I've only been that scared once, and that's when a husky ate and tried to kill my dog in a different neighborhood with a different dog. That's another story for another day. Oh, boy. But uh, it's the only time it's ever happened. And since then, I, 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 I swear... Every time I walk past that house that's got the overgrown shrubbery, I I pull the dogs in real close. I've been doing this for over a year. I'm a paranoid fool. For over a year, uh, I kind of slowly make sure the dogs are close to me, peek around the corner just to see if the coyote is there. Hasn't been there. It only happened once. And like I said, based on that, I do not walk my dogs at night. I don't walk them before sunrise. That's just my rule. But apparently that one's out the window because they're getting spotted on the Miracle Mile at eight o'clock in the morning. You know, like four. If you've had a run-in with a coyote in your neighborhood, tell me about it. Tell me where, tell me what time of day and tell me what you did. 800-222-KABC. 1-800-222-5222. Also, if there's anybody out there with some expertise on the subject, what do we do about this? Because there's a lot of small pets in Southern California. And I don't like that my animals are considered their food. You know, like 4 to 8 a.m. range, afternoons, evenings. Um, There's also been a lot of cats that have been killed by the coyotes. Um, People have reported seeing, like, severed cat limbs. Autumn Myers has lived in the neighborhood. This is horrific. This is horrific. Autumn My- We're not at Halloween shows yet. Autumn Myers has lived in the neighborhood for several years and up until last month had never heard of a pet being killed by wildlife in this part of the city. Some people are a little bit nervous or, you know, fearful, especially if they have outdoor cats or small animals or small kids. Uh, other people seem to have the attitude of like, well, you know, it's nature. They're going to, you know, they were here first. Um, yeah. You know what? If we want to go with it, they were here first line, then we should all stop killing all the ants and the cockroaches and the termites because they've been here for millions and millions of years i don't subscribe to that i i don't care what happened in the past i understand that you know there there's been droughts for many years and the food supplies up there are not good for them so they're going out here i do know some people feed them and people that feed the coyotes are contributing to this problem but i i do not care about the welfare of the coyote. I can only care about so many things. I care about the welfare of my animals. It's all I can care about. Um, let's coexist with them. Many of the sightings and... Co- let's not... I, I would not coexist with the coyotes. The coyotes are a little scary to me. Oh, real quick, we got to go to this. Uh, John in Santa Monica. John, hello. Oh, once again, I don't know how you come up with these great stories, but you are a good storyteller. And anyway, so you got a great show. My question to you is, and this is like the pet detective question, you did not include in your story the reaction of your dogs. If they had a, you know, dog extra sensory perception, barking, shriveling, you know, whining, uh, warning of the animal, or once they were aware you were in shock, did they pick up your shock and then, uh, you know, reverberate your vibes? Uh, So please extend the story to your animal's reaction. So... My dogs don't pay attention to other dogs. They, they don't bark at other dogs. That's just not their thing. They did not even notice the coyote before I did. But as soon as I picked them up and started screaming, that my one Cavalier, she's chill. She'll, she doesn't really care what's going on. She's got ears that fold down. She's not paying attention. My Chihuahua started trying to wrestle her way out of my hands and out of her harness because I was freaking her out. And understandably so. I sounded like I was having a panic attack, but 
I, I would, I guess, be a little more measured next time. Definitely the most important thing, keep them close to my chest and never, ever, ever turn my back on the monster. But yeah, my dogs did not notice the coyote first. I noticed the coyote, and I don't think they even reacted to the coyote. They just reacted to me screaming my head off. That, that's, I mean, that's an interesting part of the story because... You know, now do your dogs have good hearing and good smell sense? Do you know that? Oh, they've got fantastic hearing. In fact, uh, my little Chihuahua's hearing is so good, fireworks freak her out. And she can hear things from, she she can hear and track the movements of flies. She's fascinating, but they just don't care about other dogs. I don't know why, that's just how they are. You know how dogs, when they, you know, you're walking, I mean, Dogs are like they see another dog and they bark a little bit and sound off like, hey, dad, there's another. You know, I mean, I just that's so you have unique dogs in that sense, I would think. Um, maybe uh, maybe the coyote gives off a vibe that subdues other animals. You know, I mean, they're so quiet that they they disarm the animal with some kind of, uh, you know, uh, you know, magnetic vibration they send out that, you know, to I don't know. I got real lucky because that that coyote did not seem aggressive at all towards me. I mean, I still freaked out because it's a coyote. But it, as soon as I started screaming, like, started walking the other direction. Like, I don't want to deal with this. I don't know what you are. I think I scared it. So I think that's the right thing to do. Luckily, it wasn't aggressive. or I don't even know if it noticed my dogs. I just noticed it, and I started panicking. Well, obviously, uh, maybe the dog saw that you were a good person and he, your dogs were rescue dogs. And the coyote said, I give you guys a pass on this one. <laughs> or something, you know, the, uh, animals are very smart, uh, especially the coyotes. They're clever. They're wily. And so they, they he had to make a mental calculation, too. Right. I mean, are you particularly uh, uh, large or in any way uh, intimidating yourself or how would he read you as a, as a as another animal? Well, I work in radio, so obviously I'm, a, I'm morbidly obese. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, maybe there was something about your dress or your behavior that intimidated the fox or something, or he, or maybe he liked you. He says, "Oh, I listen to him on the radio." He says, "That's that's." <laughs> I don't know. That might be um, it. Anyway, John, well, thank you so thank much you for the for call. Me. I appreciate it. Great. That was great. Glad, glad that uh, people are enjoying that story. It's one of my weaker moments. I, I, it's the only time I've had like a one-on-one interaction. I, I, and you know what? I used to live in Burbank near the foothills, and I had driven past them because I used to live for work, leave for work at four in the morning to go do the McIntyre show. But like, yeah, that's understandable. This was just like, I'm in the valley. What's this thing doing here? And I've heard my neighbors talk about they've seen one at midnight, but haven't had a sighting in this neighborhood in quite some time. But the fact that there are sightings is freaking me out that there are sightings in the Miracle Mile. If you've had a run-in with a coyote in your neighborhood, tell me all about it. 800-222-KABC. How did you react? 800-222-5222. Let's go to Betsy in Torrance. Betsy, hello. Yeah, um, yeah, interesting topic. Uh, I moved to Encino, and I grew up in Hollywood. I didn't know anything about coyotes. Uh, But my uh, first introduction to Encino was when I was getting up very early to commute to go to work uh, in uh, actually South Bay, uh, Torrance area. And uh, I was, it was dawn, and not too bright, but it was dawn, and I could see something loping down the sidewalk uh, with very high hips, long, sleek body, skinny, and his head was uh, beneath. beneath the the um the level of his hips he was he kind of you know underslung or something <laughs> aerodynamically <laughs> anyway i thought gosh that's not a dog that's a i think it's a coyote oh my gosh and then when i got home that night um i told everybody at work about it but then when i got home that night i i could hear ooh, ooh, and I thought, oh, my gosh, this is Encino. <laughs> All the howling. It, they really like packs of, of coyotes howling. Well, I had a cat cocker spaniel, and I had to stay very close when I walked her at night. And, yeah, it's um, – I don't know what the solution is, but maybe we should put, like we do for deer licks, put coyote licks on the periphery 
of our metropolitan areas so they don't feel the need to come into the city. I don't know. <laughs> I mean, something's better than what we're doing right now, which is kind of nothing. We're not even doing trapping because that is considered inhumane. And I, I don't know what to do, but I just don't want them in my neighborhood. No, nor does anyone. But I don't know. It's uh, I love animals, but not, you know, sitting across from me at the breakfast table. Um, I mean, coyotes particularly. But I, know, I like all the animals be... except the ones that want to eat me or my pets. <laughs> They're eyeing you across the table. <laughs> but, um, yeah, there's got to be a, a humane solution. I mean, this is uh, probably coyotes have been... Um, known to come into cities all over the nation. We're not the only place with coyotes. So maybe we can do a little uh, research and find out what other cities have done. Maybe they have uh, some solution. I don't want to kill them. I don't think we should take pot shots at them. Pick them off as they come in to the front porch. No. Yeah, no, I I don't think we should do that. But uh, there's got to be something. Betsy, thanks so much for the call. Do we need to uh, invest in coyote birth control? Get some uh, get some spermicide in the food supply up in the hills? I mean, these things, they're populating, and they, they don't have a lot of food, and then they get crazy, and then they want to start going after your cats and dogs. All right, the phones are blowing up. It looks like we got a lot of reactions here, a lot of people that have been through this. I've been through it. Have you had a run-in with a coyote in your neighborhood? Tell me where, what time of day, and what you did. 800-222-KABC, 1-800-222-5222. It's Coyote Talk on the News Blitz with Randy Wang on Talk Radio 790 KABC. It's the News Blitz with Randy Wang on KABC. We're taking your phone calls at 800-222-KABC, 1-800-222-5222. Coyotes have been spotted on the Miracle Mile in the Mid-Wilshire area, and not just in the middle of the night or early in the morning. We're talking like 8 a.m. They're attacking cats. If you have had a run-in with a coyote in your neighborhood, I'd love to talk to you, 800-222-KABC. Let's go to Andrew in Garden Grove. Andrew, hello. Hi there. Yeah, I've definitely had an experience uh, with coyotes in my neighborhood. And I'm in Garden Grove. Uh, it's definitely more of an urban area as well, but they are out here. Um, one day I was uh, with my girlfriend. We were walking out with our dog, and down the street I could see him walking a coyote. So uh, I told her to go inside, and I called my uh, her brother out, and uh, another coyote was behind it. So we decided to do what kind of you did is a scream and try to scare it. And it actually worked. Uh, they got really freaked out and turned around um, and just started walking the other way. So I think that's the solution when you encounter them uh, in your city. Yeah. Get really big, make a lot of noise. These things, they're usually timid and scared. If you turn your back to them, that's different. But if you face them and you get real loud, they'll usually run away. Yeah, yeah, and uh, aside from, you know, you being a Fourth uh, of July grump with the fireworks, uh, and then being afraid when you encounter these things, I've all, I've encountered a uh, coyote another time, and it was one of the scariest moments in my life as well. Uh, it was just awful. With when you're with your dog, you know, it's just you don't want nothing to happen to them. Yeah, that's the thing. You know, like, I, you know, Coyote could come after me. I, I, I could defend myself. I got a seven pound little Chihuahua who is my precious little heart. If anything happens to her, that Coyote better run for the hills. Yep, yep. I agree. And I love the topic. Thank you so much. Thanks so much for calling in, Andrew. Appreciate it. 800 222 KABC, 1 800 222 5222. If you had a run in with a coyote in your neighborhood, they're getting spotted on the Miracle Mile. 800 222 KABC. Where? What time of day? What did you do? How did you react? It's 800 222 KABC. It's the News Blitz with Randy Wang on Talk Radio 790 KABC. It is the News Blitz with Randy Wang on Talk Radio 790 KABC. We're here every single day from 5 to 6 talking about the local issues that matter to you most and taking your phone calls at 800-222-KABC. 
1-800-222-5222. Do your emails as well at randykabc at gmail.com. That's randykabc at gmail.com. Coyotes are getting spotted in the mid-Wilshire area on the Miracle Mile and not just way early in the morning or way late at night. We're talking 8 a.m. They're attacking cats. I've had a run with a coyote in my neighborhood once and it freaked me out. If you've had a run-in with a coyote in your neighborhood, tell me all about it. 800-222-KABC. 1-800-222-5222. Let's go to Rosemary in Orange. Rosemary, hello. Hi, Randy. Um, Yeah, I had um, about a month ago, I was um, moving a large market umbrella out into a little 10-pound Maltese, um, multi-poo, really followed me out. And so I thought, okay, no big deal. He's was standing right by me, um, put the market umbrella up. And then I looked over and he had wandered up over to the grass. And the next thing I knew, I saw what looked like a little stuffed animal just being carted off. And it wasn't dark yet at all. It was just very dusk, you know, just, and I just saw this little thing going across the lawn and I'm like, oh my gosh. So I ran after it and I was screaming, drop him, drop him, drop him. So I ran for, Oh, I don't know, probably half a mile. And this coyote was just going so fast. And then finally he just, I think he was tired. He turned around and he just looked at me and he dropped my dog and then he just ran off. So I just grabbed him. I didn't even know you shouldn't turn your back on him. So I just grabbed my dog and ran home. And uh, luckily he was fine, except his paws were a little bloody on the back from being dragged. But anyway, it was a scary thing. That's for sure. What a close call. That is a wild story. It was wild. And then the next morning I was thinking, I wonder if our cameras caught that. So I looked it up on the camera and there it was. There was me running, you know, screaming, drop him, drop him. But yeah, it's, it's, um, they're so quiet. And that's another thing people don't realize is that they're just, they just are, they're, they're sitting looking at you waiting. And then they just, he just ran by, like I wasn't more than 10 feet away from him. I didn't even hear it. All I just saw was the dog being carted off. So they're pretty, they're pretty sneaky little things. But yeah, I good on you for having the endurance to run after that thing until it finally gave up. I, well, yeah, I just walked the Camino in Spain (laughs) weeks before, so I was in pretty good shape for the, for the, the chase. So, you know, it was very scary and my heart was pounding and you know it i just i told my i ran and told my husband he, and he didn't even get it until he saw the video from the cameras but yeah you got to be careful with those things you can't i i never let them out without me being with them ever because we've we've lived in coyote country my whole life and um and i used to have little maltese's that were five pounds six pounds so yeah this is just very very weird but yeah, oh, yeah. I, I know well, i see little signs posted everywhere you know, lost dog, lost cat. Well, in our area, yeah, they're not lost. They're gone, unfortunately. Unfortunately. So, wow. Well, thank you so much yeah, for sharing so that sad. story, Rosemary. That was incredible. Thank you so much for the call. Holy cow. Let's go to Mike in Long Beach. Mike, hello. Hey, you got me? I got you. You hear me? Yeah. Hey, hey. nice to talk to you, Randy. I got multiple run-ins with coyotes at my house in Long Beach going back several years. And the first one was when I realized we had a problem, I'm looking out my front window, this little old lady's walk, walking her little chihuahua down the sidewalk on the other side of the street. I live across the street from a school, and I see this huge coyote running towards her. And I bolted out the door and went out there and, like, headed him off, and he literally, like, ran around me and I had to run around the other way to try because he was going after her and her dog and she's freaking out and trying to run down the sidewalk. Anyway, I, I got it. I chased it off. It goes in, into the bushes by the school where the kids, really the sidewalk, the kids all walk by. So I called Animal Patrol and, and if you want some details, I can give you a bunch of details of why this is a horrible thing. Another California problem that is political and they're doing nothing nothing about it for political reasons. oh please mike but tell us all about problem, it so I, tell me how we got well, here okay okay well first let me just tell you the other run-ins and then i'll tell you what I, i've been to city council meetings and a bunch of things but uh 
after that, and after me going and talking to city council and animal control services and everything else, because it's like I know a lot about animals. I do a lot in the mountains and such, and I, I, this is just a problem. These are wild animals. They're predators that would they kill your baby and eat it if they did. They're just predators, right? So my neighbor next door had this cat for like 15 years, and it's an outdoor cat. It jumped in a little hole under her crawl space at night, but it just lived basically under her car by the sidewalk. And everybody in the neighborhood that ever walked by petted this black and white cat. Everybody knew this cat. He just sat there and for years and years. And then one morning, or actually it was uh, late afternoon, I come and I see blood and fur and oh, I know what on. happened. A coyote got it. And then the next door down, they have a little terrier and this was at night. They uh, she opened the door to let her little terrier out to pee. She's got the door open. She's standing on the steps. Her dog's like six feet away, taking a leak. And a coyote runs by, snatches her dog, jumps over her six foot fence, and out runs across towards that school. I did not have any home at the time, but we had uh, multiple neighbors heard her screaming, and people come running out. And the dog was pretty feisty and. And he got away a couple times. The coyote got it back. They're running, trying to chase the coyote away. He's grabbing the dog. It was a circus. And they finally got the dog. And even as they're carrying it back to the house, he's running after them because he wants his dog back. And anyway, $5,000 in vet, in vet bills later, the dog is still alive. But luckily. Oh, thank fun God. Fun Worth fun every penny. Yeah, but I mean, it was it was touch and go, and he was he was hurt very very badly. But anyway, I, I these are a problem that we only have in like places like California, where nobody in their right mind would just let these animals run around our city. If you have a stray dog or something like that, they come and they catch it. They let these things run around. Say we're supposed to coexist, and they. I went to the first meetings when they started all this hazing. They were going to have hazing committees. And I told them, hey, this is not going to work because I know animals and coyotes are smarter than most. They're going to figure out real quick. You take your little can of pennies and start shaking it and make that noise. Yeah, it'll scare them off until they realize, hey, you're not going to do nothing. I said, pretty soon shaking that can of pennies, that'll be like a dinner bell for these things because they've lost their fear because nobody hurts them. And they populate like crazy and this is a great place they've got water and food galore even if it wasn't for the pets they eat just the just the roots and the vegetables and the stuff that just is around the city they can live on that this is like paradise for them but they used to have to sneak in at night and get it and people used to shoot them when they came into cities and get rid of them but now, because the Humane Society says, no, you can't do that, we have to coexist, and they put up a bunch of phony literature, and now they're just they're letting them run. And I've seen many as five and six at a time. They're everywhere. I've seen them at every hour of the day, noon. I had one last week running down the sidewalk at, like, what was it, 4 o'clock in the afternoon, and I chase after them to chase them off, but they just run around run away from you. They're, they know you're not going to hurt them. And they're raising puppies in this environment to not be scared of people and to hunt in our city. And it's it's going to go till a kid gets hurt, like happened like I don't know 30 years ago in Glendale, where I killed a child, and they went and they literally shot like hundreds of coyotes around there. That's what. Yeah, we shouldn't have to wait for it to kids. get that bad. We really shouldn't have to wait for it to get that bad. Thank you so much for the call. I appreciate it. I'm not coexisting with predators. There, you know, I, I feel bad. But we got to do something to protect our little pets, our little animals, and our small children. We'll keep going here with your phone calls, 800-222-KABC. It's the News Blitz with Randy Wang on Talk Radio 790 KABC. It's the News Blitz with Randy Wang on KABC. We're taking your calls on run-ins with coyotes. Let's go to Klaus in Thousand Oaks. Thanks for holding, Klaus. Hello. Good evening, Randy. Just want to thank you for putting on a great show here and uh, hosting, uh, co-hosting John, John's show as well. So uh, before I get started on the story, I, want, I do want to give advice so I can be helpful right off the bat. Number one, um, 
never, ever, ever use retractable leashes. Have always a fixed length leash. That way, if something horrible goes wrong, uh, you have a fixed length to deal with versus, you know, in a, in a, uh, in a stage of fright, you let go of the button of the retractable leash and the dog just goes off and you can't, you can't get it back. Um, well, uh, rule number two, don't have dog doors. Uh, coyotes can get into those, those, uh, small doors and, uh, carry, carry a stick, carry a flashlight. Uh, if you're walking out at night, uh, even in your own yard, uh, coyotes can jump fences and they can dig under them too. So, uh, just some, uh, rules of advice there. So let me get to the story real quick. Uh, so this was about a year ago, uh, early summer, uh, my dog, uh, Dodger was with my folks in the foothills of Burbank. That's where I grew up. And we always knew coyotes roamed around and existed and commingled and all that. So, but just so happened that a coyote entered into my parents' yard. My parents have a sizable yard, so it was easy for the coyote to get in. And this was just a few months after my, um, my daughter was born. And my dog has a very, uh, very strong protective nature, especially after that. He got a sniff of the coyote in the yard, saw it on the hill, and my dog went after it. And we didn't have any time to whistle for him, to grab him, nothing. He just bolted up the hill. This coyote, I did not witness this. I was at work when this happened. Uh, so I got wind of this like three hours after the incident. Uh, this coyote was two thirds bigger than my 30 pound, uh, Husky terrier mix. He was mostly, he's mostly terrier. Um, if you're familiar with the cartoon dog, uh, from the movie Oliver and company, uh, Dodger, he is the, he is Dodger from that movie. He went after this coyote, oh, wow. fought it and only <laughs> fought it away. And he only got a scratch on his chin, just a little, uh, little blood patch. And then that was it. And my, my, my parents, my wife were freaking out after that incident. And then I come home, uh, we live in Thousand Oaks now. And uh, I come home, I hear this story. I go to my dog Dodger. I'm like, all right, man, who's a good boy. You're such a, <laughs> wow, that's awesome. Okay. And it just, you know, obviously, you don't want that to happen to any of your dogs. But honestly, he, he was he was the hero. He still is a hero. There was actually we actually ran into a coyote a few months ago here in Thousand Oaks on the night walk, and my dog caught a sniff of it, saw it, and he wanted blood. <laughs> so he has no fear. <laughs> he is we didn't. he is out we to did, protect his people. That that is an amazing story, Klaus. Thank you so much for sharing it, and thanks for all the advice, too. 800-222-KABC. It's the News Blitz with Randy Wang on KABC. It's the News Blitz with Randy Wang on KABC. Let's go to Jackie and Artesia. Jackie, hello. Hi. Hi, Randy. Hi. I'm I'm pretty um, depressed, actually, because I had... Um, it's, it's the dog that I've had the longest. Um, he was about 14, and he's a chug, so a, a chihuahua pug mix. And um, his name is Bobby. And unfortunately, I, wa- I was on a short trip, and um, I, had, I left him under the care of my mom, who she's 80, um, so she's not, you know, She's older, but she's not that old. And so I, I'm i really upset um, because I wasn't there. She said that he was in the doghouse, which is right outside um, our front door. And our front door is not facing the street um, because about a month ago, I was out to let some of my dogs out uh, to use the bathroom and I accompanied them. Um, and it was maybe about 1 AM and I heard, um, it, what sounded like cats fighting. 
Um, and then I uh, looked on the street, and it was actually a pack of coyotes, and they had killed a cat, and it looked like they were um, trying to take off with it. And so now um, I don't know what happened to my to my um, chihuahua, Bobby, um, because he just went, apparently he just went missing because my mom said she fell asleep. She went back inside and oh, took a God. nap, supposedly. Yes. And he's never, ever gone outside of the property because um, there it is gated. I mean, it's not the most secure gate, but it's not a fence or anything. Um, it's an actual gate. Um, and I, I just don't know how he could have slipped through, even though he's pretty small, maybe a little over 10 pounds. Gosh, I sure hope you find him. I sure hope the worst didn't happen. Jackie, I'm sorry we're out of time, but thank you so much for sharing that story. That's the kind of stuff that is heartbreaking, which is why I have the panic attack when I see the coyotes. Thanks to everyone for sharing your story, sharing your advice. This is an important topic, and we will, of course, revisit it. Sorry we couldn't get to all the calls, but they were great. We'll see you tomorrow at 5 for a much lighter topic, something about food. It's the News Blitz with Randy Wang on KABC.